Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you joining us on the program today, This Week in America, online, thisweekinamerica.us. Our guest on today's This Week in America, Robert D. Finch, has published some 20 papers on humanism, was president of the Humanist of Houston from 1992 to 1997, elected vice chairman of the Chapter Assembly of the American Humanist Association in 1999 and to their board in 2002, a graduate of Imperial College, University of London, where he studied physics and obtained his Ph.D. While at college, he helped found a humanist club called the Huxley Society, named after Thomas Henry Huxley, who was a professor at Imperial College. Upon completing a postdoctoral fellowship in the physics department at UCLA, he joined the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Houston in 1965, becoming a professor in mechanical engineering in 1972, served as chairman of that department from 1976 to 1979. Robert received an award for research on liquid helium, has some 40 technical publications in acoustics, and during the energy crisis of the early 1970s, served as Assistant Executive Director of the Governor's Energy Advisory Council, State of Texas. He retired from the University of Houston in 1998, now a Professor Emeritus and author of Great Objectives, an Inquiry into Secular Ethics, Robert D. Finch, with us on This Week in America. Robert, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Uh, Thank you. Looking forward to this discussion, a, a fascinating book, and you mentioned in the beginning the, the inspiration for this investigation uh, struck you about a decade ago as you were reading about the new atheist as coming into vogue. Talk a little bit about that experience and what was it that, that prompted you to write the book and why it took a decade to put all of this together? Well, uh, I've always been interested in uh, ethics and ethical problems and uh, uh, well, people's religious beliefs and so on. And um, when uh, the, um, uh, and I've always been a humanist, I think, pretty much, um, although I, I was brought up in a, a, a narrow fundamentalist uh, household, I abandoned that when I went to college. So um, uh, from that time on, when I went to, uh, from going to college to uh, to now, I've, I've been regarding myself as a humanist, and I've talked about that, given quite a few talks on the subject, uh, and I discovered that it's very, really quite a wide uh, subject. And those talks over a 10-year period eventually evolved into the book, Great Objectives. And so uh, that's how it got started, and um, I wrote it down and uh, corrected it and, and sent it off to um, some publishers and uh, got some reactions, and um, that's how the book came about. And it was eventually published by uh, Ex Libris, and then another version of it was, uh, came out from uh, Page Turner. So uh, that, that's the story of the book in a brief Yes, not shell. and it is a really uh, a very important book, and a book that uh, once you start reading and you start following, it's like, okay, I, I really can't put this down. I want to learn more as you're reading the book. We talk about humanism, and I, and I mentioned that in the intro as well. Define that a little bit for us. Give, it a, give us a little bit of background on what exactly humanism is. Okay, uh, well, I think it's, we call it humanism to distinguish it from um, uh, barbarism or uh, animal brutish behavior, uh, because um, when we, in our process of evolution, uh, became human human beings, um, some of the... uh, some of us began to wonder how exactly we should behave. I mean, animals certainly behave. They, they have a codes of behavior which are uh, part of their uh, genome. And so did we uh, primitive uh, human beings, the hominins that uh, evolved from uh, apes, uh, certainly had ways of behaving. And uh, chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans and so on they all have uh, ways of behaving which are part of their uh, inbuilt um, 
heritage. Now, uh, the difference between us and the animals then came about when uh, we really evolved language. And then from language, we started to think about what we were doing. Uh, the, the, uh, there were many uh, uh, places in the world where this uh, developed. Um, we think particularly of the Greeks, but it also uh, occurred uh, r roughly the same time in uh, in Asia with the Chinese and uh, the Indians and uh, in Africa with the uh, ancient Egyptians. Uh, so all of these um, communities began to um, think about what we were doing and, and gradually evolving a, a sort of proto-science of behavior and that's what we call humanism it's it's a, a scientific thinking rational thinking about behavior and in the book you talk about humanism is not a finished product is that what's so so fascinating and the evolution it sounds like maybe what you your thoughts were 15 20 years ago They've changed now. Talk about that, the fact it's not a finished product. Um, well, it's, it's like any science. Yes. I mean, the, the um, uh, science has, has changed considerably uh, in the many years that we've been working at it. I mean, uh, the physics, uh, our understanding of physics today is quite a bit more different, more sophisticated than it was 200 years ago. Well, we've had a similar sort of evolution in our um, behavior. Uh, and so um, as time goes on, we realize that certain sorts of behavior are not uh, acceptable and, and we have to make changes. I mean, probably the, the greatest example of that would be the, um, the uh, evolution of uh, how we uh, treat servants. So uh, we no longer believe that slavery is an acceptable way of of, of dealing with uh, people who work for us, and um, so that changed. And in America, we, we, there was a whole civil war fought about that, um, and now uh, in the present time, there's there's a similar sort of uh, evolution of the behavior of how we. Um, work with women. Um, the subjugation of women is is no longer accepted in uh, in, in the, the most um, advanced uh, countries in the world. So uh, that's the sort of change that we're talking about. Yeah, boy, when you talk about evolution, what's happening in the Me Too movement and that we're seeing this evolution uh, unfold right before our eyes. The book we're talking about is Great Objectives, an Inquiry into Secular Ethics by Robert D. Finch. This is a republished book and now available for sale in ebook and paperback at its lowest retail price. Available for sale in all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press and Media Direct Orders, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and more. Information if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you should be able to uh, to link on directly to all of those sites and get information on the book. In the book, it's interesting, you talk about Socrates began his discussion of ethics by asking questions, and you've got a list of the questions that he would ask. Should we do the same? Is that how we, how we should go about this? It's quite a good way of doing it. Um, you see, what Socrates did was uh, he traveled around the country, and uh, after a while he got to be well known, and people would turn up just to hear him talk. And uh, well, what he would do was try to get somebody to make some statement about some subject of interest uh, to him, something that had um, sort of moral or uh, ethical uh, implications. So, uh, you know, nowadays he might ask something about the Me Too movement or something of this sort, and someone would be bound to say something, and uh, then uh, he would begin to question that person, and, and often, often he would be able to find inconsistencies in what the person had said. And so uh, it would start up a dialogue, So, uh, but it would be something where uh, the, the person he was talking to, the interlocutor, would 
would be uh, very uh, definitely interested because it it was part of their own uh, philosophy or background that they were talking about. So uh, the Socratic method, as, they, as we came to call it, uh, is where he asks questions and then uh, he, he tries to examine the answers and uh, maybe reformulate things into a, a better statement. And uh, so it, that's called the Socratic method and it's still a good way of teaching the subject. Yeah, as you're looking through the list of questions, it is, your questions come to mind, and it's like this would be interesting to really get into and, and take a look beyond just the, uh, the words, the thoughts, and the meaning of, of what you're reading. In the book, you talk about every generation of philosophers has tackled issues like some of the issues that you just mentioned, uh, sometimes along the way adding new insights as you throw them out there, and it's subject to, to discussion. Are we having new philosophers now, 50, 60 years from now? Will they look back on people during, during our lifespan and consider them to be philosophers, leaders of thought? I think so, yes. I think there are, there are a lot of people who are uh, interested in uh, ethics and uh, examining uh, religion and so on. And uh, the, the change is going on. The younger generation are uh, are uh, exploring new ideas and increasingly uh, for instance in uh, the um, polling uh, people are often asked uh, what their religion is you see or what what ideas they have about religion and uh, there are uh, younger people tend to say that they have no religion uh, when it comes to asking what the religion is, they say none, <laughs> N-O-N-E. Yes. And so that uh, has become the title of uh, a sort of percentage, uh, uh, quite a large percentage now of the younger generations. So it's well into the 30% uh, range now of people will answer none. And so I think the outcome of that is, going, is bound to be big changes in the in the world, there are a lot of uh, a lot of things going on that are, are really shaking us up in the way we do things. You know, we're, we're inventing uh, robotic uh, yes uh, robots and uh, uh, so on, and uh, we're making big changes in our knowledge of the human genome, and we can uh, we may be able to cure certain uh, um, genetic diseases before they really become bad and uh, we may even exp extend the lifespan of people i mean that's something that's still a, still uh, really being debated by um the, the medics and the bi biologists but uh, uh, it, the, it's certainly making a big difference our lifespan is a lot longer than it used to be and there's so many of those issues you talk about that we're facing now, the, the ethical, moral problems that uh, an individual society might be facing at the present time as we're looking into the future. And in some cases, the future is here with some of the, uh, the discoveries, inventions that you're talking about. How should we go about resolving these moral and ethical dilemmas? How, how do we go about doing that? Because it, it really is a, a complicated problem, isn't it? Yes, well, <clears throat> of course, uh, I'm a humanist, and uh, it's a, a bedrock of the, the humanist uh, approach to these things that, that we do believe in, in discussion and um, thinking about things. So we uh, propose uh, rational solutions, uh, but we also listen to the, um, the emotions that we have, uh, the uh, instinctive sort of behaviors that were part of our um, uh, in, uh, part of our uh, animal inheritance that we s still have around. So we, we still react um, uh, like animals in many cases. And that's, that's not meant to be a pejorative uh, word. It's, it's, uh, in, in some ways it's a neutral, but uh, um, it, it's part of our reaction. I mean, we, we have certain emotions that are, that are there all the time and uh, then we can add to that then our uh, rational uh, investigation so we think what we humans think that uh, you've got to listen to your emotions 
but you've also got to start thinking about them from a rational standpoint. You know, it's interesting, you mentioned discussion and how important that is. Most people, when you throw out their robots, they're like all excited and it's like, boy, that would be great. I love that concept. And then they find out a robot has taken their job and suddenly I wish we would have had this discussion before we got this far along. Sometimes do we delay the discussion until it, it, it I don't want to say it's too late, but it, it, it's, it, it's more difficult to discuss later than it is in the beginning of some of these. Well, you know, we're, we're human beings. And <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. It's exactly the sort of thing that we tend to do. We don't, uh, or we very frequently do not react until we've got a real problem, you see. And, and then once we've got a problem, then we start to, to think about what we're going to do about this. But uh, things are happening so fast these days that it would have behoove us to start thinking about some of these things before they get to be, you know, overwhelming, overwhelming difficulties. And you bring up a number in, in the chapters in the book. The book we're talking about is Great Objectives by Robert D. Finch. Book's available at, at pageturner.us in the bookstore. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, a few minutes left in the program. One of the chapters that particularly interesting, Economics, Capitalism, and Prosperity. Uh, just very briefly, how does all of that fit in uh, with all of the the possible moral dilemmas that we're going to be facing now and and into the future? Well, it's that's a, a very good question. I mean, the, the, um, the uh, <clears throat> I think that the growth of uh, economic behavior way back um, when you know, different tribes uh, occupied different parts of the world. You know, began when people learned how to uh, exchange, to barter. You know, you you can uh, you maybe have uh, certain types of crops that grow on your land, and uh, uh, I don't have those things on my land. But I maybe I, I've got some uh, metals that, or ores or something of the sort that we can dig out of the ground, and so you and I could arrange a, a swap if we're sensible people. Or, of course, we might get into uh, having a war about them. But um, let's, let's say we, we, we act sensibly and um, uh, we go in for barter. And now, as time went on, we began to realize that uh, uh, invent, the invention of coinage and uh, money was a very good way of uh, carrying out bartering. Uh, so uh, it was a way of storing value, you see. Yes. Uh, you, you can uh, dig uh, ore out of the ground and convert it into coins, and those coins then have a permanent value. Um, so that's how our economic uh, behavior got started. Now, uh, th that's a very simple uh, sort of concept, and uh, we're trying to run very uh, complicated, nuanced, uh, exchanges based on that, and sometimes we have problems with it. But uh, uh, we're learning all all the time. We're we're evolving new, more sophisticated financial systems and ways of uh, of uh, uh, swapping things around in a more equitable manner. So uh, as, as uh, time goes on, hopefully, we're learning how to do all of that. In a, in a more uh, equitable sort of way. Yes, and so, so often... I, I think that the, um, uh, the uh, financial system, the economic system, the um, capitalist system uh, is a very good way of, of doing those things, and it's given great benefits, huge benefits to the world. There are all sorts of things that people have invented uh, realizing that they could exchange these things with other uh, people and, and uh, get a good return from them. So uh, I, I do hope we're going to be able to uh, maintain our um, economic capitalist system, but at the same time put in the corrections and the uh, improvements that um, uh, we can uh, see uh, as, as time goes on and make it more... Uh, more equitable. The book we're so talking I, about. I, I think we're going to continue doing that, but hopefully, 
in a more intelligent way than we have done uh, up to now. Yeah, and that's one of the many excellent chapters in the book, Great Objectives and Inquir- in Inquiry into Secular Ethics. The author is Robert D. Finch. This is a republished book now available for sale in ebook and paperback at its lowest price, available for sale in all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press and Media Direct Orders, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia and New Zealand, and a lot of others. That information available at our website thisweekinamerica.us. Mentioned before, in, in working with Paige Turner on uh, on the book and getting the book out and getting it in, into more hands, talk about what that what has that experience been like for you in working with Paige Turner? Uh, well, it's been quite an educational experience. <laughs> <laughs> they are uh, they're a good group, uh, but they're a fairly small um, group. You see, the sort of problem that you have if you write a book like this. I discovered this for myself. I really. Maybe I should have realized ahead of time, but I didn't. Um, that, uh, you know, there is not a huge market for books like this. Um, people don't go into a bookshops, uh, by and large, looking for non-fictional sort of books uh, about uh, ethics or uh, even about economics and so on. Um, uh, there's a lot more of a market for... Uh, for fiction and uh, good stories and narratives and so on. Yes. So, uh, you know, you're working with a fairly small, sophisticated uh, group of people when you're trying to market something like this. And uh, I I had not realized uh, that that was the situation. I think they're they're good companies. I think both of the two companies that I've worked with have been very uh, helpful in a way. But um, neither one of them have uh, got uh, you know, uh, uh, tremendously deep pockets where they can afford to, uh, you know, to give uh, uh, give lots of copies of the book away. We can't. We can't exactly. do that. It's, it's not. Uh, it's not feasible to do that. So um, uh, I, I've learned how to um, how to work with that situation. Hopefully. Yeah, the book is available at pageturner.us in the bookstore, the other places that I had mentioned, and you can get information by going to our website, thisweekatamerica.us. The book, once again, is Great Objectives, an Inquiry into Secular Ethics. Our guest has been Robert D. Finch. Robert, uh, an excellent uh, discussion, a lot of great ideas in the book. It, when you go through, you, you take some time because you're thinking as you read through each paragraph because there's something there that we really need to uh, you really need to think about, to contemplate. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. And once again, the book, Great Objectives, Robert D. Finch, the author and our guest. Information at our website, This Week at America. Dot US. Thank you.